Hey, it's Todd Graves. Welcome back to the channel today. I am back at my home course, Oak Tree National, and it's a lot different right now because if you look out here, it is winter golf. Right now, it's probably about 40 degrees. It's a little windy, and I want to go out there and take you on the course today and show you how different golf can be when you play in the winter and give you some tips about playing in some of the cold weather. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Well, one of the things I want to talk about before we get on the course and hit some shots out there, winter golf is a lot different than your typical 70 degree, no wind, ball flies really easily, it's warm and, and you get, you know, you can hit the ball very far. Cold weather is different because the ball doesn't fly as far. The, usually the, like for example, this golf course, the wind will come from different directions that you're not used to, so the holes will play completely different. So winter golf is one of those things where I think you gotta do some different things to prepare for it. One of the things where I start is just in how I dress. A lot of people don't dress correctly for cold weather golf. What's important for me is to wear layers. Don't, don't pile on a heavy coat and get bound up. The key is, is, is to stay loose. So I put on very thin layers. Right now I have three layers of clothing on. I have, a, I have an underlayer, which is a garment that I wear, just kind of a, a tight fitting garment against, uh, it's kind of one of those tight fitting, I don't know what you call them, stretchy garments. That's really a, a, the base layer. Then I have a shirt on, then I have this pullover on. So three basically thin layers that keeps you insulated. But here's what else it does. It also helps that if it warms up, let's say in an hour from now or you're on the course and it starts getting warmer, you can peel off a layer or two and not get cold. So be careful not to just wear too, much too many articles of clothing. I see a lot of times people will wear a big old jacket, look around here, they're all bound up and then they get hot and they take it off and then they're cold. So layers is the way to go. The other thing too is you must spend some time here on the practice tee getting a warm up. This is my, my swing thing. I'm going to go ahead and just make some swings with this and just it's really about getting loose. And I'll tell you, it's very easy to get out there and just not want to warm up because it's cold outside. And you get out here and you're like, ah, let's screw the driving reins. I don't want to warm up because it's too cold. Well, you need to spend probably a little more time warming up. All right, I'm going to start hitting some wedges. I always start with a few wedge shots just to get. And the thing about, the thing about it is it's not, I'm not trying to hit it hard. I'm just trying to get my rhythm back, hit a few solid shots here. And just get a little loosened up because when it's cold like this and it's windy in the course, I'm going to get out there and that course will play a completely different golf course. I played the course on the channel, as you know, a couple of months ago, earlier this year, and I'm hitting knot irons into the greens wedges into the greens. Today it's going to be four irons into the greens and long irons, some hybrids. Uh, totally different golf course today. It's going to get loose. Probably won't hit a, a ton of drivers, but to me it's all about just getting your rhythm back, especially when you're not, if you, you're not playing much, because usually in cold weather people aren't playing every day. I also wanted to give a shout out. I got a couple of sponsors. If you notice, you can check down in the, in the link below in the description. Upglove is a really interesting company. They, ha they make really good golf gloves and they're very inexpensive. So they've been a, become a sponsor of our channel. And if you check out Tozy, I don't know if you've been looking at some of the stuff we've been doing with Tozy. I always look for very healthy products to eat on the golf course. Check out Tozy in the link below. They got some really good uh, stuff that you can snack on the golf course. A lot better than most of the stuff that's out there. All right, hit a couple more and hit some drivers. One thing too, I always, for me, hitting good shots is always about how good I feel at a dress. You 
you know me, I talk, I talk about locking it in, you know, locking in my address position. And to me, when I'm out here warming up, a lot of my warm up is just getting the feel back in my address position. So it doesn't really matter what club I'm hitting here, as long as I can get that kind of establish that feeling at my address, feel good there. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is just trying to feel that address position. All right, let's hit a couple drivers. Once again, trying to get that feeling back in my address position. Pretty tight swings. It's always tight when you're cold. One more. A little better, okay. Let's get out there. I feel the wind picking up. It's probably getting colder. <laughs> it will be a challenge. Yeah, one of the things about playing in conditions like this is that it's the shots you hit into the greens, it's very hard to control your distances because you're hitting, number one, longer shots in the greens. The fairways sometimes run really fast. Greens are really hard. And it's just so, golf is a much, it's not a fly it in there and spin it back type game. It's more of a get the ball on the ground. So one of the things that I always prepare myself for in conditions like this is Short game has to be really sharp because it's really about, we're gonna work on our putting obviously and get, get our putting feeling good. Um, but also hitting the right shots because right now this hole is directly into the wind. You can't see it on that camera, but it's 25 miles an hour or so into our, into the, in our face here. This, this hole generally for me, this hole is driver, non iron driver, eight iron, sometimes driver wedge today, I bet we'll have a five iron into this hole. So it's gonna play extremely long. So the, the important thing here is, is just try to hit it solid. I, I mean, it's, you know, people can, a lot of times I see people get out here and try to swing too hard, try to hit the ball too hard, try to muscle it through the conditions. If I can just hit good solid shots and keep it in, in, in play, and then on my approach shots, keep it in places where I can either get it close to the green, get it up and down, you're gonna shoot a pretty good score. So let's give it a shot. Now, I'll just kind of walk you through some of the stuff that's important to me when I play. I use a line on my golf ball to make sure I'm lined up correctly. So I'm working on, I always work on that. Um, the, uh, in this hole, this particular hole, it's par four. And the pin, I, I, so one thing you can do is locate where the hole is located. It's on the front left side of the green. I'm gonna try to keep my tee shot in the, in the left half of the fairway. So I, I go out here to the right side of the tee. You see that leaf in front of my ball? That's kind of a pretty good line. Sometimes I'll pick out a spot so you can see that leaf that's right on my line. As long as it doesn't blow away when I get up there, I think I'm in good shape. So that's kind of where my line is. Let's just go ahead and hit that shot right there. So I hit it perfect. So. And the other thing too is trajectories. Like that one, that one I just want to make sure I hit really good and solid trajectory because you don't want to balloon it up into the wind. Just try to get the ball down there and get it into a good position. I'm not trying to be perfect out here. That's, that's one thing that, that when conditions are doing this, you try to hit it solid. It's not about making six birdies. It's about good shots, one shot at a time, just handling the conditions. You know, generally, generally when I play this hole in normal conditions, and I'm usually 20 yards further up there. I mean, this is, you know, this isn't terrible, but it's, it's one of those things where it really, the conditions really have changed. 
152 yards. So that, brought, that drive probably only went about 240 yards. It's just hard to hit it out there when you got conditions like this. So you're just trying to get it around. I'm in the fairway, I'm, I'm happy with that. 152. Now, when you look at this shot, let me just tell you what I'm kind of going through on this approach shot. There's not a lot on the front side of the green. So you can see that I'm 152 to the flag and probably 145 to the front of the green. There's a false front on, on there. And then, you know, I'm not even paying attention to the stuff on the right side of the big bunker over there. So really, 20 mile or wind, so it's playing about 170 maybe in the 170 range. Um, but you're better off being kind of on the front half there because it's not a hard up and down from the front side of the green. So I'm favoring between the front of the green and the flag. So let's just call it a one, 165 shot. And let's do this. Let's. And what's funny about these shots, it's really about just hitting, hitting the right, the flight on the ball. So it's 165. Now normally 165 for me that's a seven iron, but I'm gonna hit this little six iron because I feel like the wind's gonna hit me straight on. Yeah, so if I hit that seven, I just don't think I can get it all the way there. So I'm gonna hit the six. And what I'm gonna do, a lot of people ask the question, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my hands down a little bit. This gives me a little more control of the club. It'll slow it down just a little bit. And it'll, it, so why would I wanna slow the club down? That, that, you know, you're into the wind. Well, if I add too much speed to the club head, it adds spin. Spin gives the ball lift, the ball goes high into the air. So what I want to do is I want to kind of slow the club down a little bit. It's already a six iron, it's already lofted, and then it'll come out with a little lower trajectory. So this is kind of, don't call it a punch shot, I'm not punching the ball. I'm just flighting it with less spin and a little slower club. You can do it with a five iron too, but I'm going to do it with a six iron and see if I can get it there with the six. All right. Well, I kind of blocked it a little bit. I don't know if it went in that bunker or not, but it's, it wasn't bad. I flighted it good. It was a good flight. Um, I kind of felt like I was lined up to the right there just a little bit. Um, I don't know. Take a look. But I mean, the thing I like about that shot was that it came off low enough. And the key to the wind here is just getting it down, not letting it get up into the wind. So let's go look and see where that one is at. So that's, you know, like if you look where the ball is, it's a little long. It's on top of the deck there. Um, but what's, uh, What's good is, you know, I hit enough club. A lot of times I just see, to me, it's really about controlling your golf ball. It's not about how far you hit it. Cause a lot of people will get out there and go, okay, I'm going to see if I can get this eight iron there. It's 152 yards. Well, to me, I can get an eight iron there from 152 if I hit it perfect. But this, these conditions are not about perfect. They're about just making sure that you're your, the wind's not affecting the ball too much. So I hit this, I pushed it. You can see the bunker that I was talking about. This wasn't really even in play, but I pushed a little bit. I'm up here on top of the deck. I don't have a, a super easy putt, but it's, uh, it's on the green. So we'll see if we can't get this. Let me fix this ball mark real quick. All right. One of the things that I really, this winter time, you know, I think everybody needs to kind of pick out things they're going to practice. And one of the things that I'm really, really working on this winter for me is green reading. So I'm going to spend some time on the green. Um, the walk down here with me. I want to show you what I'm kind of looking at. One of the things that's helped me tremendously as far as green reading, the first is, is what kind of what I do first. The first thing I like to do is come down here and ask, I, and so I'm on, I'm pretty much on my line and take a look and say, what side of the hole do I think that ball will go in on when I'm down here? Like, what side is it going in on? So if I do that, look in here, it's pretty straight, but it may come into the, into the right side of the hole. So come down here and just see what side of the hole, yeah, so it's gonna come in kind of the right side of the hole. So that gives me an idea that no matter what happens when the ball comes down here, that when it gets close to the hole, when it's going at slowest, it's going slightly that way. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna step back here and kind of check out what the ball's gonna do in this main area and this is a 60 foot putt so it's a long putt so I got it coming basically right to left the whole way and then obviously when it gets down there slows down it's going to the left all right let's just give it a run here 
They're probably not super fast, but about to find out. There it's swinging to the left. Check that out. There it goes. So yeah, so that was easy, right? Because had plenty of speed coming down the hill and notice when it got to the hole, it all went to the left. So one of the things that, that I've been doing, just kind of recap on that, is I've been coming up here, getting kind of where my, especially on the long putts, when I got a super long putt, and just saying, okay, when the ball gets in this area, which side of the hole, does the, what side of the hole is the ball gonna enter? And that gives me an idea of where that ball needs to be when it's coming down the slope. A lot of times when I wasn't doing that type of green reading, I would, I would, I would worry too much about this stuff in here and then the ball would get up here and it would die off. So I, I, I spend a little more time in here now and try to figure out when that ball is coming into this area within let's say five or six feet, which way do I see it moving? And that's kind of generally what happens coming down those slopes. It's helped me a lot in my green reading. Hole number 11, this, this is a very, very good hole. Um, as you know, it's one of my nemesis holes out here. The wind is coming at least can't feel it as much in here because of these houses, but it's coming, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour from the left. So even if I, if you look down the fairway, if I hit it straight down the middle of the fairway, by the time the ball gets out there, it's going to blow it into those bunkers to the right because the wind will get it and knock it over there. And it's also because we're elevated slightly. So it, the ball has more time to get pushed by the wind. So the line here is to, is to keep it on that left side. So I come to the right side of the tee and just try to hit it as much on this left side of the fairway as I can. The wind knocks it to the right, it's in the fairway. So to me, it's, it's, it's really about hitting it solid straight down that left side. So I hit it, I hit it a little thin on the face, but I got on a good line. It's right down the left side. So I didn't get it out there as far as I can possibly get it out there, but it's gonna be in the fairway. It'll be right in the middle of the fairway, but I'll have quite a distance into the hole. I didn't quite catch it solid. All right, so this will be fun because, I mean, this hole's long enough. It's probably four, 450 from here. And it's long enough to where if you don't hit that drive really solid, you end up with 210 yards, you know, 200 yards into the green. So. We'll see. That's part about winter golf. It's just, it's a, a bit of survival. And when you don't hit them quite solid, I mean, I hit it thin on the face. Meh. Just wasn't my best, but it's, uh, it's going to be interesting when it gets down here. And it's funny because I always compare myself to where I was earlier, you know, in the summer when I was driving it down there, hitting wedges into the green. And now I'm like, okay, well, 200 yards into these greens. So it's, well, you know, I think I hit it on the right trajectory, so it got down here okay. It's not fantastic, but it's, it's better than I thought it would be. All right. Still got a long way. <laughs> All right. Sprinkler head. It's 179 to center, and, you know, that's, that's again, 20 yards, 20 yards short. I mean, that's, uh, I'm losing... I'm losing 10, 15% of distance out here just because of the conditions. Now think about that for a second. If you're losing 20 yards off the tee, which is about what I'm losing, and then you're gonna lose another 10 yards here, these, every hole is 30 to 40 yards longer based on the shot reading. So that's why winter golf is so challenging because the course just gets harder. It's, it's not this beautiful warm weather, the ball's compressing, it's flying, it's just cold. <laughs> it's just cold. All right, let's, this is not easy. Let's look at this shot here. Okay, the pin's back today, so. 186, 196 was slow. So I got 200 yards, like I said. That's, this, I, it's been a long time since I've had 200 yards into this hole. Now, let's talk through this crazy shot here. The pin, far, look, the green's elevated, so it's, it all just kind of comes back off the front. Huge bunker on the left, flag is on the left. Um, two, it's the wind's coming, I'm elevated 196 uphill in the wind. It's a 210 yard shot. Would it be smart to take it at that flag? No, it's not smart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit it 
pretty much towards the center of the green. If it drifts off to the right, I'm in the middle of the green. I'm gonna hit a, well, let's see what I can get there. I got a four iron. I think I can get a four iron at least to center of green. See how this feels. It's gonna have to move to get it up there. But watch this, here's what we're gonna do. All right, just, to, just for the sake of winter golf. This is my hybrid. I hit this 225 yards. This is too much club. However, however, it's a 225 yard shot and it's, I'm cold, I'm tight. It's the second hole of the day. It's windy. I can sit there and try to hit a perfect four iron, but no, I'll tell you what, let's just do this. Let's take this hybrid. Let's just knock it onto the green because it's an easier swing. I don't have to hit it perfect. And let's check, get out with a par. All right, let's just do that. I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna choke down a little bit on it just to take, take some speed off of it. I loved it. All right, check this out. This is gonna be really good. And I'm impressed with myself because it would have been very easy to just try to hit that four iron perfect. That hybrid, the wind's coming from the left. I took it right at the left center of the green, let the wind push it back over. It's probably middle back of the green. Let's go look. Hey, look, boomer sooner. Um, so, all right, let's talk through that just for a second because I just want you to understand that here's a hole generally that I'm hitting at most in the summertime. At most, I'm hitting six iron into this green. And, and mo most of the time it's an eight iron or a seven iron for me into this green. And I just sat there and hit hybrid. Now, look where it's at. It's on the back edge of the green. Um, again, I have a long putt. Remember when I mentioned to you when we were warming up that one of the tough things about playing winter golf is that you're not hitting a lot of short irons in the conditions you can't fly the ball you can't control its distance as easily because you're hitting longer shots in so your proximity to the hole is always greater so it really comes down to a short game how good are you putting and can you take advantage of you know like you're not going to make a bunch of these 50 footers like this but you got to two putt these things and you know you can keep your score down when you do this all right so Let's once again, let's do, walk with me for a second. Let's take a look. And ask the question, what side of the hole do I think this is gonna go in on? That's higher than this. It's coming in the right side. So this thing's going this direction. So I know it's going to the left. So I got a right to left breaker. I'm gonna walk back here and I think the whole thing is going right to left the whole time. Let me come back and just kind of walk it off. All right, I like that. I'm gonna. Give myself a pretty good line on the right side. And it's just a good speed putt. It's into the wind, so that wind's hitting me pretty hard. So I can give this a little bit of a hit. Eh, I kind of killed it. Let's go see if I can make it. It was a little bit, it was a good read. I had a good line on it. I just, uh, let me pull the flag on this. I um, talked myself into hitting it too hard. Let me see if I can make this. But one of the good things about what I was watching, make sure that if you're going to, notice how I watched that ball go past the hole because I saw the, I wanted to see the line past the hole. So. I got a pretty good idea of what this is going to do. So, I mean, I saw the line coming this way, so it wasn't real hard to kind of hit it back on that line. So, all right, got away with there with a little two putt. But this is, you know, this is kind of the fun thing about winter golf is that it's going to test different parts of your game. I, that was, these are fun for me because I'm really want to work on my putting. So it doesn't bother me to have these long putts and, um, hit it to the middle of the green. And once again, as you know, from my channel, 
I'm not a miracle golfer. We try to play good, solid, solid conservative golf and keep our scores down and then take advantage of shots we can. Let's go play this next hole. It's, it's a good one. It's, today it's downwind though, so it won't, be, it won't be too bad. Matter of fact, there's a creek. They, um, they redid some of the course here. They changed the tee angle. They had a guy shoot a really low score this year out here and they made the course harder. That's what they do out here. If somebody shoots a good score, they make the course even harder. So, so yeah, thanks to, thanks to a low score, they've decided to make this course even harder for us. All right, this co this, I'll play, I'm gonna play this hole from all the way back just because it'll be a challenge to get way back here on this back tee. Um, the other thing that happened out here this year on our course is we had a, a huge ice storm and you'll see a lot of limbs still laying around, but it cosmetically really changed the height of the tree line. Um, some people probably wouldn't notice that, but when I target, when I'm targeting at a golf course, um, for me playing, playing a course like this, especially which is a target oriented golf course, I have lines I've picked. It's basically where the trees are. You have fairway trees and, and, it, and it basically, um, uh, when you look at tree lines and fairways, it's basically creating a, a frame for how you hit your shot. So I'm hitting it into these kind of pictures. Um, let me give you an example here. On this hole, if you look down the fairway, okay, so you have the tree line on the right, and you got the fairway and you got this tree line on the left. Now, the tree line on the left, there's a creek there. So you don't want to hit it on the left side because it'll go to the left into the creek. So really your line is, you see that oak tree, you can see that nice brown oak tree right there. It's on the left side of the oak tree is your line. So based on the wind, it's coming this way a little bit. I'm actually going to scoot on this side of the tee on this, this one, just to get this favor of the opening on that right side. And now, so my picture is, not only am I lining my golf ball up on that line, but it's the only thing I'm really focused on. I'm just focused on that left side of that oak tree. I'm gonna line it up there and just make a swing. I don't look, I don't pick targets in the fairway. I pick lines. I wanna see my ball go onto a line. So I pick the line, then I just try to hit it on that line. So that is exactly on the line. And even the wind even kicked it. So I can't place it better than that. But let me explain that shot really quick. So I picked my line, was the left side of the oak. I lined my ball up exactly on that line. I have that line on the ball. I set up, I, by the way, I'm on the side of the tee box that allows me to get to that line. Think about this. If I came all the way over here, now it's kind of like I'm too far to the right. Now I'm bringing the left into play. So by going to here on the tee, where I was, right there, it makes it real easy to hit it on that line. Tee, tee angle is huge. And it created a perfect uh, sight line for me to the right half of that fairway. Hit it out through the wind, gently push it to the left, and right in the middle. Notice how every one of those variables increased my percentage chance of hitting my line and it took the creek on the left out of play. That's, uh, that's pretty much textbook golf right there. So for example, this hole from that tee back there, it's long. It, it's not playing that long because it's downwind, the fairway is running pretty fast. I had that drive good, but I didn't like kill it, but it's way down here. So this, you know, this hole's not playing hard. So, that's the thing about winter golf is you'll have the holes that don't play normally hard, play hard, and the holes that play hard will not play as hard. So it changes the whole characteristic of the golf course, which that's kind of fun because, you know, I play this golf course a lot and you kind of play the same course over and over again, but now it's, it's, different. it's a different track. Um, all right, so let's see what I got. I, um, I am, look, it, I hit it on this line and it came down here. This is why you got to keep it on the right half because it kicks down into the left. 154. So now I'm straight down wind. That's that's going to be a nine iron with this wind for me. Um, 
So, you know, m most, I hit a non iron between 135 and 140 um, in that area, depending on how good I'm feeling. But a 150 yard shot, if I just get this up traveling a little bit, and if you look at the approach, I've talked about this before, you know, I'm favoring the front half of the green because I like uphill putts. I don't want to hit it behind the hole. So I don't want to hit an eight iron and hit it behind the hole. So nine iron's the right club here. All right, it's not a, not a hard shot. It's just straight to the middle of the green, and I got a, I'm picking out a spot here. So I'm, I'm coming back here. I'm picking out this spot. I got a little divot in front of me here, so I'm kind of looking at that. Well, let's just hit it solid. Hit a little bit fan. Get up. Get up. All right, sorry, it's on the front, which is exactly what happens. I didn't quite catch it, hit it okay, right on my line. Um, hit it a little thin on the front of the green. But if I would hit it solid, it would have been perfect, and if I hit the eight iron, it would have been long. So, winter golf, that's what's great about it. It's, you just gotta keep playing. And the way I play golf, and you've seen me on the channel, is I ain't, I'm just, a, I hit lines. I just wanna hit my lines, and if I hit my lines, then even when I hit a little thin like that, didn't quite catch it solid in the face. It's still right on my line. It's on the front of the green straight at the flag. So you're not going to get in that much trouble. So I don't curve the ball. You guys have heard me talk about this before. People ask me all the time, well, you try to draw it in there. I don't. Now, the wind may push it right to left or left to right, but I play for that. But I don't consciously try to ever curve the golf ball because there's variability. And so if you, if you look down at the, my shot here, Look, it's going to be hard to make birdie, but look, I'll never, you know, 99% of the time I'm going to make par. And once again, that's the, that's the good thing about playing um, smart golf is that I played for, I, hit, I played a nine iron, I played for the front half of the green. So let's, uh, let's hit another good putt. Now, one, one, one thing I'm going to do here is like, as I approach this, because I'm going to walk from behind the hole here, is I, I'm going to check out. When I look at this, I see it going that way a little bit. So again, I'm paying attention to what I'm seeing up here as I pass the hole. What side do I think that ball is gonna go? It's going that way. That's higher than that, so it's going that way. So I'm already kind of paying attention to that as I walk down here. Which is interesting because it's going this way at the beginning, so. So basically, it's going, yeah, it's going pretty straight here. It might even go that way in the middle, and then it's going back that way. So, pretty interesting putt here. All right, I'm going to put the ball down, but I'm not going to pick the mark up. I'm going to take one more look at this. So, I, I got it coming this way because of that. I don't think it's going to go a lot that way because I got that's a massive slope right there. So, one more look from behind. One more time. I got it going that way. <laughs> then it goes that way. Okay. All right. I'm going to give it, I'm going to, I'm going to let it go ahead and go that way because I do see it coming off the right a little bit here, but it seems like it's going to creep that way almost the whole time. So, all right. We got it left side. Give it a run right there. I like that. Yeah, it's kind of what I thought because I thought I might catch this kind of slope going left, but then it all wanted to creep back to the right up in there. Not a great putt, but hey, that's one of those putts that it's almost a triple breaker. It's almost coming one way there, one way there, and then one way here. So I almost got a triple breaker. Okay. Got it right edge. Yep, yeah, pretty easy. Okay. 
So I would probably say I misread that a little bit and just because when, when I saw this, I'm gonna come back and look. Sometimes it's okay just to come back and reread the putt because hey, you gotta learn. You have to learn. I'm gonna put the ball back down just to hit another putt here. You're only gonna learn to read greens by experience and trying to predict the read and then putting it. So I'm actually gonna play this just on the right side and see if that was the line. See if it does go back to the right up there by the hole. So I hate that little firm, but it comes off that slope and I should have paid more attention to that because that's right when it's slowing down in there. And then it was going so fast that hard to see. But anyway, I like it. Always try to learn something. Every time you, uh, you have a chance, don't just hit those putts and walk off and go, I missed it. You know, was, did the putt do what you thought it was gonna do? No, if it didn't, then go, okay, what did you not see? And that's the education that you can get. And that's kind of where I spend a lot of my time is just trying to figure out what system and how can I best be a better green reader. All right, we're gonna play this hole from here today just because it's a, it's a pretty much straight downwind. 148. It's funny, when I play that hole, like I just did, I almost have the same shot out of that fairway as I usually do on my shot here. It's really, they're usually pretty similar. So it's almost like I'm just hitting that shot again. Um, this is postage stamp. This is the little par three. I say little because there's not much to this hole except if you miss hit your shot, then there's a lot to it. Um, flag on the left side, 148. Again, smart play here is to just aim middle right of the green. Don't even take it at the flag. Um, and then just, it, it'll come down to the left. This green all slopes to the left. So it's really one of those holes where just try to hit a solid little non iron to the center right of the green. And then if, you, if it creeps down there, you can make a birdie. If not, you walk away at the park. People get too aggressive on this hole, really. All right, here we go, a little non iron. Watch that one. I took I took the aggressive line. <laughs> Pretty good, but I, pro I I would not say that was a great shot. Um, I was aiming about five yards right of that, but the good news was I could never hit it further left of that. So that's why I aim to the right, and then you yank it, and you're in a good good shape. So hey, that's golf right there. I tugged it about five yards to the left, and possibly get to one under par. Winter golf at its finest. All right. I'm not gonna say that was all luck because I did hit it okay. I just kinda, I was aiming, I was aiming about right here. This was my, this was my spot because if I hit it here, then it'll roll up in there and it can catch the slope and roll down here. So let's, let's step this off. One, two, three, four, five. So five yards, like I said, I pulled it five yards to the left. And it was, uh, it's going to win the skins for the day, probably. All right. Patch three footers. I always tell people, make sure you put these things out because these are the ones that tend to be the hardest on the course when you're playing for money. Okay. Let's go play one more. This is a good one. This one yesterday, this hole is either really easy or you can screw yourself. So it's all about the tee shot. Let's go check it out because this is the debatable hole whether we hit three wood or driver. Now, one thing I'm gonna do here as I walk off this green is I'm checking the wind out because you can't feel on that tee. So just check, you might wanna 
you can always pick up sometimes a little information. See the flag's coming right at me here, so it's coming straight down and across, which makes that hole straight down wind. So catching a little bit of the of the wind information there. And it's a little easier now because there's not leaves on the trees, but in the in the middle of the summer, when all these trees are full of leaves, you can get in these little areas, you don't feel the wind, and it could be blowing 15, 20 miles an hour, and you get in spots where you just don't feel it. And you've got to really look at how the treetops are moving, or you got to do exactly what we just did back there, which is pick up, pick up a little information from the flag on the previous screen. All right, let's take a look real quick. I'm not going to hit the shot yet. Let's just take one quick look. It is straight down wind, so this is the debate here. From this tee box, it's about 260 carry over the corner of that bunker on the right, which is a pretty easy carry for me from here. And then it'll run down there and you got a wedge into the green. Uh, but one thing I always take in consideration is, you know, how do you feel? Like how, how are these swings feeling, right? How am I feeling? Am I tight? Am I loose? I'm feeling okay. A three wood off this tee hits me on the left side, leaves me eight iron into the green. So it gives me a little longer shot into the green. So you got to make some kind of an assessment on whether, how you feel. I'm going to go ahead and hit the driver just because I, I want to, I feel pretty good and I want to practice that a little bit. Um, but I, let me tell you how I'm going to, I'm going to give myself a little bit of an advantage here. Normally I would tee it up and aim it over that right bunker. Notice what's interesting here is they got the tee already crammed to the left side. So it's already putting the right side more into play. What I mean by that is, Notice I'm on the right side of the tee here, but I'm actually in the middle of the tee box because it's the only place I can go to stay in the teeing, teeing area. So generally speaking, I'm on the left side of the tee, or at least on, on the center left of the tee. So it's bringing the right side already more into play. Just keep that in mind because just because I'm on the right side of the tee does not mean I'm on the right side of the tee. So I've got to somehow, so this, I'm going to line up. You see the three, the four chimneys on the house down there. I'm going with the, the middle two chimneys and then I'm going to let the wind just kind of kick it down. So dead straight shot at those chimneys and see if the wind doesn't kick it to the right a little bit. Because I feel it just a little bit off my right shoulder of the wind. All right, here we go. Perfect. All right, so chimneys is coming off the chimneys. Yeah. I'll take it every day. I, uh, so just to explain that shot, the wind, so if you see the flag, so here's what's happening. That wind is coming straight that direction, which makes this shot here, the wind is, is crossing me like this. That's why I felt it, I felt it over my right shoulder. So, so I'm aiming over here, so I'm aiming this direction towards those chimneys, and the wind is coming this direction. So when I hit my straight shot at those chimneys, it gets up there, the wind put, pushes it that way, and it falls to the right. Um, so the ball went left to right, but I hit it straight. And that's, that's what I'm talking about is I can predict the straight shot and I can let the wind push it. But for me, if I would have faded that ball, like, okay, I'm gonna move it left to right, the wind would have pushed it down into the creek. If I were to try to draw back into the wind, I can't predict how much that wind's going to hurt it. So to me, the straight shot letting the wind push it was the answer because it takes out variability and then it allows for a little room for air. If I would have pulled it, it, it's in the middle. If I push it, it's just to the right side. So I'm a, I let the wind, I play, I play with the wind. I use the wind. I don't fight the wind, I guess is my my conversation here because that's uh, that's a very important part of that shot. And this was actually a perfect shot. It got way down here too because I hit it and when the wind, by the way, when the wind gets behind it, 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 it moves it. It gives velocity. So you can see it went through the fairway, straight down through the middle of the fairway. And this is generally the spot where I, I you know, that's why sometimes I hit three wood because this is, uh, this is a little through the fairway. But it's, it's fine. It's actually, you know, it's just a little bit through the fairway. Pretty easy shot though. All right, let me measure this. One twenty-five. So that was easily three hundred and you know three hundred and ten yards. I mean, it's just going to take off down this downwind. Okay, one twenty-five. Um, 
All right, 125 is a wedge for me. Let's uh, let's clean my area up here a little bit. I don't want to step on all this crap. Make sure there's nothing right behind the golf ball either, because a lot of times what happens is if you let's say there's an acorn sitting behind the ball, and the club face catches the acorn, it's going to take off some of the compression of the of the ball, and you're going to hit a dud. So, all right. 125 downwind. All right, pins on the back shelf. So I'm I'm okay being a little short here. This this should easily get there, but you know the the the, the problem would be being way too long. But I think we'll be we'll be fine with a little wedge. All right. Make sure that the loose stuff under your feet too that's that's the stuff that'll get you too it gets loose under your feet and you slip okay oh, i hit it perfect stay there stay there stay there oh. i almost hit the flag went a little long that was, uh, pr I pretty much knew that that would go a little long, just not a ton long, but uh, downslope, it was de-lofting the face. I could feel the wedge kind of turning into like a nine and a half iron or so, because <laughs> I'm kind of sitting on downslope, which will make the ball flight lower. Kind of felt it, but I figured it was fine. Just, I'm better off just creeping over the back, you're fine. You can see it's not gonna be too far from the hole. Sometimes you can't feel the shot until you're standing over it and you're actually sitting, you know, sitting with the ball. Sometimes, and maybe you gotta back off. Sometimes you won't wanna back off that. I, I could have, but you know, it's not it's not gonna be too bad. Just on the back edge here. See where that ball landed, right by the hole there. Um, I expected it to land about two yards short of that, but because of the because of the way the ball was sitting on that slope, it just kinda came out flatting low and took off. So. Now I'm kind of glad we hit it back here because look at the uh, normally you got a pretty decent live Bermuda here. Um, this I would probably chip this but today it's all pretty dormant. It's all kind of laying down. Um, so I'm just going to putt it up the slope. I'm just going to read it like a putt and try to get it on the green and get her up and down here so okay it's going left right here boom going left if I can get the ball to get in this area right here I think it just goes down to the right so I I'm really just trying to get this thing to bump onto the green and then roll down to the right let's see if I can get a good speed good speed Great speed, I take it. It just uh, didn't come off the slope as much here as I thought it might, but pretty good. But that's the thing about it is, is uh, being smart because some people will try to chip this and if you look at that lie, it's a little matted. See how it's matted a little bit? And that can be, you know, it can lead to a bouncy club or you can chunk it pretty easy so why not just why not just get up here with a putter and just you know that that's that's a very high percentage shot with a with a putt because just get it onto the green rolling and you can get it up and down so I just play high percentage golf and look we played today and I'll be a hundred percent honest with you I've played I've played I played nine holes yesterday but I hadn't played in, in two and a half three weeks so I'm pretty rusty. I mean, I have not played a lot of golf and we just made it through those, those holes right there. The first five holes, one under par. Now, I have, have I hit a good shot yet? I actually tugged a nine iron a little bit to get a birdie out of it. I wouldn't say I've hit any spectacular shots, but what I have done is I've hit, hit really good conservative shots, stayed in play and just gave myself a chance. And I just made it through those five holes, one under par and then We'll go play the next four holes and we'll do the same thing. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, spending time on the course, walking you through the different situations, don't forget, hit that bell icon, give me a thumbs up. 
And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you soon.